Chris, and please welcome Chris. Chris, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Quite warm. Fellow Toastmasters, this, above all, to thine own self be true, as it must follow the day, the night. Thou canst then be false to any man. William Shakespeare wrote those words in the play Hamlet over 400 years ago, and they still ring a virtuous and melodic truth today. And some of you are probably sitting here and you're probably asking yourself, what does that mean? Of course I know myself. I'm the person that's known me my entire life. But what William Shakespeare was actually getting at was what we would call today self-awareness or mindfulness, or what Abraham Maslow would call self-actualization, which is the inherent drive in each and every one of us to achieve our highest level talents and our highest level potential. How do we become more mindful? How do we become more self-aware? One of the things that we need to do is we need to avoid obstacles. One of the obstacles in our life comes in the form of expectations. I want you to do a little word association with the word expectation. Has ever, anyone ever heaped a huge expectation upon your shoulders? Perhaps it was because you were the only son or the only daughter. Perhaps your parents wanted you to pursue a certain profession. Perhaps it was your spouse. Perhaps it was your supervisor. Or perhaps these, this expectation is your, of your own making. You think you should be a director by now. You think you should own your own business. You think and you feel. Or perhaps you were like me and you knew you wanted to be over here. You wanted to be successful. You wanted to be accomplished. But the only thing you knew was that you were standing right here and you had no idea how to get in the race. Yet other people are speeding by you, sprinting, and you, you're wearing concrete boots. I was, I was attending a South By panel. It was a group of speakers, and one of the speakers was actually Henry Winkler. For those of you who don't know who Henry Winkler is, he's the guy that plays Fonzie on Happy Days. A he dropped an unexpected nugget of wisdom in my lap. And I'm going to paraphrase his words. And he said to me, one of the worst feelings that you could ever have in your life is to be rudderless, to adrift, to not know what you're doing with your life. And I was sitting there, and I felt like he was speaking directly to me and that there was nobody else in the auditorium. I was adrift in the sea of life. I didn't have a paddle, I didn't have a sail, I didn't even have a compass. I knew I needed, wanted to be over here, but I, I was stuck. I was stuck at the starting line. I all started, which is how I got there, which I moved to Austin. I did not have a job. This was quite some time ago. And out of haste, out of fear, out of the desire to not go bankrupt or call my parents for some money, I cast my net in several different directions. And I accepted the first job offer I took. And I knew in my head, and I knew in my heart, it's not a good job. It's not a good organization. It has what I would call the trifecta of terrible job. It had dismal leadership, I was overworked, I was underpaid. So I eventually parted ways with that organization. And you know what happened? I got another terrible job. <laughs> Didn't get any better. Well, it got slightly better. I was working at this job when I attended that South By speech, that South By panel discussion. And I heard those words from <laughs> Henry Winkler. And I thought to myself, 
I really need to do some introspection. I really need to think about my life. I need to think about my job. And this time, I actually knew what I didn't like about the job. I didn't like the operation. I really didn't like the salary. And, but what I did like was the onboarding, the recruiting, the new hire orientation, the benefits, all the various human resources functions. So I studied rigorously. And I took the KHR certification. I took, I, I passed it and I moved on. And I know right now that I'm not at the finish line, but at least that I'm in the race. And I like to think that expectations, I like to change up the vernacular. I like to change the definition. Other people have hopes for us and we have dreams. How do we achieve those dreams? Well, we take inspiration from the acorn. The acorn has three major parts. The acorn has the stem. The stem is our connection to our past, our legacy, our lineage, our experiences. What do you like? Or more importantly, what don't you like? The calf, the calf represents our mentors, our leaders, our families. The calf, the calf is what holds the seed on until it's ready to sprout. What you need to do is you need to think about those relationships because sometimes others see true talents in us where we are blind, but other times the calf holds on too tightly and doesn't let go and you can't sprout. The seed, the seed is unlimited potential. In every acorn is a giant and wondrous oak tree, just like in each and every one of you is unlimited and untapped potential. I challenge you all to be true to yourself. Be rigorously honest with the most important person in your life, you. Cast aside any relationships that no longer serve you. Know yourself, grow yourself, and, to, and this, above all, to thine own self, be true. Thank you. Great job, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so early.